Hello students, it's Dr. Yu. In this lecture, we're gonna talk about effective team presenting. We're gonna talk about it in two parts. First, we're gonna talk about formats, and then we're gonna talk about Q and A's. There's a saying, it's an African proverb that goes, if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go with others. One of the beautiful things about team presentations is it's an opportunity to present a unified front with a team of people who you work with to an outside audience that you're trying to convey a message to. There are gonna be times when you'll be presenting by yourself and you'll give a single presentation or as a single speaker, but team presentations are really important because you have to be able to coordinate with people and sometimes audience members wanna see that there is a team working on their behalf or there is a set of people who have a unified message that want to do something for them or get some kind of message across. So it's important that you know how to execute a team presentation so that unified front and that effective message can be conveyed. So here's what we're gonna cover in this first segment. What is a team presentation? So we're gonna go a little bit more in depth in terms of what a team presentation is versus a group presentation. And then how do you structure a team presentation? We'll talk about that and the three different types of structures, although two will be most applicable to you. And thirdly, how do you block a team presentation? And when we're talking about block, we're not talking like blocking in football, we're talking about blocking in terms of theater, in terms of where do you stand and, and such. So let's get to it. Let's start with what is a team presentation? Now, to start with a team presentation, you have to ask more generally, what is a group presentation? A lot of people think groups and teams are the same thing or they're interchangeable and they are not. For example, a group presentation is an oral performance that involves two or more speakers occupying a stage and working cohesively to present or discuss a topic. You might have seen these in perhaps professional development seminars or classes that you've taken that there's a difference between a team and a group. So here are examples of group presentations. A debate is a group presentation. You have at least two people talking against each other on a specific topic with one side trying to defeat the other and there's a judge and so forth. Then you have panels and you might be invited to a panel someday. A panel is where you have a group of people come together and there perhaps is a moderator, but you basically watch a group of people, a group of speakers converse amongst themselves about a topic. You see panels all the time on news, 20, 24 hour news channels like CNN or Fox, where they'll invite three or four experts to come. And then you just basically watch them talk to each other and you're watching a conversation happen in front of you. So a panel, is sometimes used in, in community activities or community speeches where you invite a panel on a specific topic and you just watch people converse. Then you have forums, or and forums are where you have a set of speakers come and they give very short opening speeches, like very, very short, and they're independent of each other, and then they take questions. A press conference is essentially a forum. A press conference, like, if you watch UFC, the pre-fight press conferences where they have all the people on the table and you can ask one person a specific question and so forth, that's more or less a forum. And then you have symposium or symposia if you're talking plural. And these are what you see in academic conferences. Academic conferences have pres uh, panels where or presentations where you have one person bring in a paper and another person have a paper on a different topic and you present on your paper and then the other person presents their paper and it's over a general topic, but there's no coordination among the presenters. And then perhaps there's a question and answer period at the end. And then you have team presentations. So team presentations are a type of group presentation overall. So think of this as a subcategory of this. Now, what is a team presentation then? A team presentation generally has three things. First, there's gonna be a single thesis that all of the team members are going to support and argue for. So this is one speech that all of you are just having a part of, as opposed to say 
a symposium where I have my own paper in my own speech and it may agree with the person next to me, but I may have my own thesis and it's just five different speeches that you're hearing over a general topic. In a team presentation, we are giving one speech and we're each just taking a, a small part of it. The second part is that they are coordinated segments. So when you do a team presentation, you know exactly what the person before you is going to present about. And you even know what they're going to say and what they're going to talk about. And not only do you know what the person before you is going to do, you're going to know the person before them and then the people after you as well. You have to know what the person after you is going to say, because otherwise you might overlap everything that they say. And then you cancel out their need to speak because you covered all their things. So everybody stays in certain lanes when you're in a team presentation, so you only cover a specific topic and not anything outside of that, so you don't take away from your teammate who speaks after you or who perhaps have spoken before you. And then thirdly, there's high interdependence in a team presentation. So not only are you going up there and you're taking part in a larger speech and you're aware of the people before you and the people after you, you're also figuring out how can I support the people when I'm not, how am I, how can I support my teammates when I'm not speaking? So perhaps you are looking at them and nodding your head or you're helping them if they're doing some kind of engagement technique where maybe they need to hand something out. You're helping your teammate hand out those, those flyers or, or whatever it is that they're handing out. So you're working as a team to support each other and what they say affects what you say and what they do affects what you do. And you're very aware of that. So that's a team presentation. Now, how do you structure a team presentation? There are typically three ways that you can do a team presentation and two are probably going to be the most applicable to you. The first type of format is what I call the hosted format. And I'm going to go into detail on each of these. So just for now, just know that the hosted format involves having some kind of host who's going to weave your transitions throughout the presentation. The other format is the relay format. In the relay format, you don't have a host. So each team member is going to set up their own transitions between main points in the intro and conclusion, sort of like a relay race in a track meet. And then thirdly, there's also skit format. And in skit format, you would run some kind of skit and then embed the presentation within that skit. So if you were doing a customer service type, uh, if you're doing a speech on a team presentation on customer service and you wanted to show, here's what good customer service looks like and then here's what it doesn't, and then you want to embed the speech within the scene, you would do that. So that's there's rarer cases where you would do skit format, so we're not going to really cover it here. But the two that are probably going to be most concerning to you are the hosted and the relay format. Now, as I go through these, there isn't necessarily a right or wrong for which one you should do. They're just design decisions that you have to make. And a design decision is just, it's what you think is the best design for that format or for that situation. In both cases though, you're going to have a general basic team presentation structure, which is very similar to what I've taught you in the beginning of speech writing series. So in, in the, you're always going to have an introduction to start and speaker one, whoever is speaker one, his job is to be the opener essentially. So grab the attention, tie in, thesis, preview. So hook the audience in, tell them what this speech is about, give that thesis, and then preview your main points. And then in this case, potentially also your speakers themselves. So we'll talk about introducing speakers later. And then you're going to have your main point one here, and then your main point two here, and your main point three here. And so each speaker is going to have a main point. And so each speaker should be an expert in that particular main point area. And then you have speaker five, who's going to be your closer. And then the closer, they basically review the speech, restate the thesis, you know, go talk about the main points that were covered, and then find a way to clinch. So we end on that strong mic drop moment. Now, there's already, there's ways we can talk about who you should sign to what, but generally what should come first is your knowledge base. So what you need to do in a team presentation is establish what's your knowledge base. So who are the people in my presentation and what expertise areas do they bring? So here's an example of a team presentation plan that you might use. 
So you might decide first the introduction is going to be done by Laura and she's going to do the about us and all that. Main point one is going to be Mike. And then main point two is going to be Sarah. And then main point three is going to be Corey. And it looks like you're going to do a hosted formats perhaps. So you'll have Laura close because she opened. Now, the first thing you need to do is figure out what are your expertise lanes. Now, sometimes these are naturally established. For example, let's say Laura, Mike, Sarah, Corey are a startup company, let's say, and Laura's the, the CEO and Mike is a market researcher and Sarah is an accountant and then Corey's just is an operations manager. So naturally they should cover their areas of expertise. If Mike is a, a researcher, he should do company profile. If Sarah is an accountant, it probably makes sense for her to do the acquisition because that's her expertise and Corey's that. And then because Laura is the leader and you're doing a hosted format, it makes sense that the leader is going to host everyone because the leader is saying, look at what my team, look at this team that I brought you and come see all the great things that they're doing. Kind of like an Apple presentation where Tim Cook hosts the event and he introduces experts or his, his, his team as they go through each product that they're launching or introducing to the audience. Now, the other thing is when you do a team presentation, I also encourage backup behavior. So this can be unfortunate when this happens, but let's say Mike is your main point one expert and Mike gets sick or Mike just drops the ball in preparation. It's a good idea to have somebody else on the team be ready to be a stand in for Mike. So see Corey's backing up Mike, Mike is backing up Sarah and then uh, Sarah's backing up Corey here. Now that can be hard, like backup behavior. When you're doing that, you should at least know the basics of the other person's main point. Maybe be ready to step in like full scale if they need to, but you should at least have a pretty good understanding of what each person's main point is and specifically be ready to stand in if something were to happen to one of your speakers on the day of the presentation. Now, the other thing you have to consider when you're deciding which format to use is your audience participation level. So you're going to have two different types of audience participation when you give a group presentation or a team presentation. You might have the passive audience. A passive audience is an audience who generally will stay quiet during the whole team presentation. They just let you talk and they just don't say anything the whole time. So it's, you get to give your team presentation uninterrupted. Nobody's going to ask you anything. And when you're done, they'll do questions at the end. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you might have an active audience. An active audience is going to be an audience who they have no problem at all in the middle of your team presentation just saying, Hey, wait a minute, or wait, I have a question or wait, say, say that again, or wait, when you show that graph real fast in the middle of your team presentation. So an active audience is going to interrupt you. They're going to stop you. They're going to ask you questions. They're going to raise their hands and just try to interject. Now there's different speech contexts that you can be in because for example, in a very small audience, small room, conference room type presentation, where maybe you only have two audience members for them or, or you have over here on the passive end, uh, a, a large room audience, or just talking to hundreds of people at once. On this end, you might have something that's more like a performance. So when you have a passive audience, they're essentially treating your team presentation like it's a performance, like you're going to the theater, you let the actors act out the play, and then at the end they bow, and then you interact with them after the performance is over. So with a passive audience, they more or less treat the team presentation like as if it's a performance. They're going to respect your performance. They're going to let you finish. They're going to let you talk. And then at the end, when you say, okay, now we'll take Q and a, they're going to let you, then, then they're going to engage you. But an active audience might think of the team presentation as more of a group conversation. So you're in this small conference room with just two audience members, perhaps. And to them, this is just a group conversation with, with a bunch of people. So they're going to feel like that's how they're going to talk to you. And that's going to be how they expect you to interact with them. So in either case, you have to stick to the plan, whatever plan that you come up with as a team, you'll 
stick to the to the outline and to the speech that you've came up with. Stick to the main point expertise lanes that you have. Still have an open, still have a close. So a lot of times you may not know what kind of audience you're going to get if you don't know the audience very well and there's no way to find out. So have a plan and stick to it. If you get interrupted a lot, that's okay. So just answer the questions that they're asking. And then once they've said their piece, continue on with the presentation, continue on to main point two speaker, continue to do your transitions, continue to do everything that you're going to do until you get to the end of the presentation. Now let's talk about the hosted format. The hosted format involves the following. First, you're gonna have a master of ceremonies or an MC, and you can call them different things, an MC, a host, the, the weaver. And what an MC does is an MC opens a presentation or opens an event, and the MC also introduces and closes the presentation. So the MC is gonna be your opener, they're also gonna be your closer. And most importantly in a team presentation, the MC is gonna serve as the transition between each speaker. So if you're the MC, you're going to open the team presentation and you're going to say, welcome everybody. Today we have a presentation on, and then you go into your intro. We have four of our team members here, and then you might introduce each team member and have them say their name and their credentials, or just at least their name and their role or their title. And then now you're going to get into the preview of the speech, and then you're going to hand it off to the first speaker. And then you do that for the second and the third, you hand, you, the, the speaker gives it back to you and so forth. And then you close the speech. So here's how it would look visually. The MC is gonna open the presentation and then the MC is gonna serve as a transition to the first, to the first main point speaker or speaker two. Once speaker two is done, speaker two is gonna give it back to the MC. So the speaker two will give their conclusion and then now they're gonna say, and now our MC Chris will take over or something, or now I'm gonna hand it back to our MC Chris. And then MC will come back and say, okay, thank you, John, blah, 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 transition to speaker three, then speaker three is gonna give it back to the MC, then back four, MC comes back and closes the speech. So, in this format, the MC is a, is a weave, is a, is a thread that's tied throughout the entire presentation. If you're gonna do the MC format or the hosted format, you gotta make sure that your MC is a good speaker. Because if your MC is not a good speaker, then and they're just not good at all, the problem is is now you're seeing them multiple times and that can that can hurt the momentum of the team presentation. What you'll often hear is that your strongest speakers should be the openers and the closers, just like in a relay race. So you gotta make sure if you do that, if you do the hosted format, that your MC is good at MCing. Otherwise, it's just going to be a repeat problem that you're going to face throughout the team presentation. Now, regardless if you're doing the hosted format or the relay format, you want to make sure that you have a good opening. So make sure you grab the audience's attention or hook them. Tell them what the thesis is. What's the thesis of this presentation? What is the takeaway that you're trying to get right away that you want the audience to know? Then you're going to preview the speech. Also, identify the speakers. So when you preview the speech, tell them what the main points are, identify the speakers. Now, this can go in different order. You can grab the attention and then thesis, then identify speakers, then preview, and then transition to the first speaker. So you'll always do number five last. But there's a way, like there's definitely room to play here as far as what order you do this. But generally, you should identify your speakers in the introduction and then at least their names and their titles. If you also want to do credibility statements for each of the speakers, then you can, but you can also do the credibility statement in the transitions. So how do you transition speakers? Now this is really important because in a team presentation, this is the big moment that you have to make sure goes smoothly. So when you transition speakers, the first thing you want to do is have some kind of transition statement that links what you just said to the next speaker. So if you're the MC, you take it, you take the, the mic back or the clicker back from the previous speaker and you say, okay, now that Sarah has said X, Y, and Z, now John is going to talk about, so speaker name, 
And if I didn't talk about John's credentials earlier, then I'm going to talk about him now. Now, John, our CFO who did a ton of research on this market and, you know, say something about what John does or did that adds credibility to what he's going to talk about. John is going to tell you how this new product is going to save you money in the end. Okay, so give a quick topic preview of what John's going to talk about without necessarily stealing his thunder, but making it sound interesting, like a little bit of a cliffhanger. So then we want to listen to what John says so that John then gets all that momentum of interest from the previous audience member or from the previous, uh, from the previous speaker and then hand it off to John. So hand him the clicker or hand him the mic or whatever it is, whatever formal way of signaling that John is now the speaker, hand it off to him. So regardless of your, if you're doing hosted or relay format, you, when you transition speakers, you always want to have a transition statement that relates what was just said to the next speaker and previews what that next speaker is going to say and previews it in a way that makes it sound interesting and evocative that makes me want to keep listening to the presentation. The transitions are so important because you spend time building goodwill with the audience as one speaker, but you have to keep that momentum going for the next speaker and then the next speaker and then the next speaker. So transitioning is critical in team presentations and then practice the handoff as well. Now, what about relay format? If you've done team presentations before, this is usually what you're taught by default. And so hosted format may be new to you. Relay format may be more familiar. Relay format works just like a relay race. There's no MC in a relay race. There's no person at each station like handing off the baton to the next person. In a relay, you're the runner and then you hand off to the next runner directly. So there's no MC. Secondly, you're going to be doing the transitions. So there's going to be one speaker who's going to be an opener. There's going to be one speaker who's going to be the closer. And then in between each speaker is going to transition to the next. So you're going to finish your speech and then you're going to give the, the top, the transition and uh, speaker identification and topic preview yourself and hand it off to the next speaker. And then when the members open and close, you may have one different person open and then one different person close. Or you can kind of do a hybrid hosted relay format where the same person is the opener and the closer, but then the speaker self-transition. So that's kind of like a hybrid between the two. But in any case, here's how it would look. So you'd have speaker one and speaker one still does the work of an introduction, grab attention, tie in, thesis, preview. And then they're going to transition to speaker two. Then speaker two is going to give their segment. And in speaker two, you should still have an intro, main points, conclusion. And then when you're done, you transition to speaker three. And you give that good transition statement, the intro, the transition statement, identify the speaker, give their credentials if it wasn't done here, and then hand it off. And then once again, speaker three picks up, go in, speaker four, go in, and so forth. Just like a relay race. So your experts should be speakers two, three, and four on their specific expertise lane or their specific main point. Speaker one and speaker five should be, both be strong speakers because speaker one is the first impression. So that's the primacy effect in psychology. And speaker five is the last impression and that's the recency effect in psychology. So in psychology, there's two big psychological principles that influence what people remember and how people form impressions. The first impression, primacy, and the last impression, recency. So how do you block a team presentation? Okay, so now you've, de you've decided the content, you've decided who is gonna be what in terms of who's gonna be speaker one, who's gonna be speaker five, who's gonna be opening, who's gonna be closing. Now you have to decide, okay, now when we physically present, how do we stand and block our presentation? So. Here are the basics to blocking. When we're talking about blocking, we're talking about blocking in theater, not blocking in football. So the first thing is, when you're blocking, you wanna have a unified stance. So when you're standing, you wanna make sure everybody, so here they have their hands in front of them, that's good, none of them are distracting. So when you are standing in a team presentation, you do not wanna distract the audience from your own presenter. 
So if you're sitting there shuffling or like looking around the room or looking away or looking at your phone or looking at the wall, all of that's creating background distraction from your speaker and that's bad. You do not wanna take away from your speaker. You wanna make sure that your speaker is getting all the attention. Secondly, you wanna make sure that your gaze is on the speaker. So you're looking at the speaker. If the speaker makes a joke, you laugh. If your speaker makes a good point, I think it's okay to nod your head a little bit if it's long as it's not over the top. I understand sometimes like before you speak, so let's say you're speaker three and speaker two is going, that as speaker three, you might wanna look at the audience and see how they're reacting to speaker two so you can decide if you need to do something to, to get them back in if it looks like they're not paying attention. I would do that very minimally. Your whole time, you should not just be looking at the audience, you should be supporting your teammate. And then establish a speaking lane. So when I say speaking lane, in this case, we're talking about something physical. So when you're all standing there, you don't wanna stay stand, you don't wanna speak from here, right? If it's your turn to go. Notice how she's forward. And so she has a whole lane here, right here, to walk and move around and be dynamic. So when you plan your team presentation, figure out where's gonna be the speaking stage area where I can walk and move around. You're not a, a quartet where everyone has to stand in a line and speak. The speaker should have a stage and everybody should be off that stage and not blocking. So blocking in this case, getting in the way of the speaker. So there are different formations that you can use to block a team presentation. So first you have the centered formation. Now this is gonna depend on the room. So if you're able to see the room ahead of time, you're able to plan for things like this. So in this case, you have the audience here and then here's speaker one, two, three, and four. And here's the display. Now, you might think, well, aren't they blocking the display? So centered format only works if this display is above the speakers. So in some rooms, the PowerPoint or the screen is not on ground level. It's like on the second story of the stage. So you can stand below the PowerPoint and not block it at all. So in that case, I would be okay with like a centered formation because you're not blocking, you're not getting in the way of anything if you stand in the center. But if the, if the PowerPoint screen is on floor level and you standing in front of it would block things and obviously you would not use centered formation for that. What can you usually work universally regardless of the display being floor level or, or high level is the chunked format. So you would have speaker one, speaker two, speaker three, speaker four, and there would be a, a space here to not be in the way of the display. Now, I would stand in the order that you're speaking. So notice here, this is going left to right. So from the audience's standpoint, stand from left to right. So then it's predictable who's gonna go next. Also, because then it's easier when you have to do your physical handoff, you can hand off to speaker two with speaker two being right there. Now, when you're speaker two, you'll have to plan your handoff when you do your transition here, so that way you're close enough to speaker three to hand off to speaker three, because you have this big gap here. So that's why it's important when you do chunk format that you have a staging area, but speaker two will have to make that, will have to make that walk to speaker three. And speaker three can meet speaker two in the middle and then go from there. So it just depends on the display. Is the display second level or is it floor level as to how you do that? So you'll have to practice that if you do chunked format. If you do left aligned, you're gonna have everyone just to one side of the room. Now, if the room permits that, if the stage permits that, that should be okay. I know in some classrooms, for example, there's like stuff here, you know, and then it's like you have to be all chunked and like grouped together. But in any case, you want to, if this, this works, if everyone can stand in a straight line, you don't have people standing in front of each other, or you're like bunched, like a bunch of balls in a ball pit. Same with the right aligned. So once again, you'd have to just decide if you can see the room, that's the, that's the most ideal situation. If you can't see the room, then you have to be prepared for either chunked format, I think is the most universal because you're not going to take a lot of space either direction and it can work if the display is four level or second level. Left or aligned or right aligned is also probably the second most usable as long as you just practice both sides, left and right. Because if you can have enough space on one side of the stage at least, great, and then you can practice handing off and doing a staging area from there. So if you're left or aligned or right aligned, 
and if this display is first level, floor level, then you're probably, this is gonna be your speaking area. So then have each person step forward when they speak and work the stage area here. In review, we looked at what is a team presentation and we talked about what makes it distinct from other types of group presentations, teamwork, interdependence, a single thesis, that's what makes a team presentation a team presentation. How do you structure a team presentation? We talked about establishing a knowledge base and establishing expertise lanes. We also established that there are three different types, but two most relevant to you, which are the relay format, where there is not a host or MC, and then the hosted format, where a host basically opens the presentation, does all the transitions, and closes it. And then lastly, we looked at how you block a team presentation, both in terms of your stance, in terms of your gaze, and also your arrangement on the stage. And part two, we'll talk about how to run Q&As, because that's a huge part of team presentations. See you there.